You are now listening to the Ernest Sick tutorial. I'm Berenice Batu. I'm a postdoc researcher at, from the Freiburg Galaxy team at the University of Freiburg in Germany. Before you have listened to the transcriptomic lecture from Fotis, and now we will apply what you learned during these lectures to RNS seq data, and yeah, we will apply that to real data. And for that, we will use the European Galaxy server that you can reach at usegalaxy.eu. You should have learned before uh, when following one of the Galaxy introduction tutorials how to log in, so please log in to this uh, server. Um, and then we will follow the tutorials. So the tutorials you can find that on the training uh, on the Galaxy training uh, materials. So you can open a new tab and type training.galaxyproject.org. You will be redirected to this page where you have all the tutorials listed. You go to transcriptomics and then you go to the reference based RNA-seq data analysis. You will have these tutorials. Um, as you may have already seen it, you can also uh, uh, re have the tutorial directly visible into Galaxy. So uh, to do that, you click on this small hat on the top, which is see Galaxy training materials. You click there and then you go, you are redirected to the Galaxy training page and then you go to transcriptomics and you search for the reference-based RNA-seq data analysis tutorials, you click there and the tutorials will be open. And it's the tutorial we will follow now. So and with these tutorials, we will try to answer the different questions, like what are the different steps to process RNA-seq data? How to identify differentially expressed genes across multiple experimental ex conditions? What are the biological functions impacted by the differential expression? of genes. And at the end of this tutorial, you should be able to do several things. You should be able to check a sequence quality report generated by FASQC for rna data. You should be able to expand the principle and specificity of mapping of rna data to an eukaryotic reference genome. You should be able to select and run a state-of-the-art mapping tools for rna data, evaluate the quality of mapping results, but also describe the process to estimate the library soundness, estimate the number of reads per genes. Explain how, to con how, how the cunt normalization is done to perform, to perform before sample comparisons, construct and run a differential uh, gene expression analysis, analyze DSEC output to identify, annotate, and visualize uh, differentially expressed genes, but also perform a gene ontology enrichment analysis and uh, perform and visualize an enrichment analysis for cake pathway. You probably, most of the term that you heard before, you may never heard before, and but it's not, it's not, um, Everything is fine. We will, you will learn that too by following these tutorials. Before this tutorial, you should have gone uh, through at least one of the Galaxy introduction tutorials and also followed at least uh, the quality control and mapping tutorials. You can find the links onto this tutorial there and follow this tutorial. Um, as Fortis did for the introductions, um, with the lecture introductions, RNA-seq has become a widely used technologies to analyze uh, the continuous changing cellular transcriptome. It's one, one of the most common and aim of RNA-seq is to identify gene, is to profile the gene expression and identify genes and molecular pathways that are differentially expressed between different conditions. And it's what we will do now in these tutorials we'll try to identify differentially expressed genes and pathway from real data. And for that, we will use the data that has been published in 2011. And in this, in this um, study, the authors wanted to identify genes and pathway that are regulated by the depletion by a bacillar genes. So what they did, they deleted the bacillar genes in some drosophila by RNA interference and they extracted the total RNA and to prepare and prepare uh, single end and parent uh, RNA seq libraries for the samples that are where uh, RNA uh, where the bacillus gene have been depleted but also for some samples where from control samples where nothing happened 
This library were then sequenced to obtain RNA secrets for each sample. You can find the old data uh, available. The old data are available in, in CBI. You can find the detail there. But for these tutorials and to learn how to, run, to analyze this data, we will use only seven of the samples. Four that are that we can call control samples or untreated samples, and three treated samples where the Pacilla genes has been depleted. So each sample constitu constitutes a separate biological replicate. Um, but for for some of the sample, some of the sample has been sequenced using parent sequencing, and some were sequenced using single end. And we will learn how to manage both of these this different type of sequencing. So through these tutorials, we will deal through a normal RNA seq uh, data analysis pipeline. So we will do a quality control mapping, counting the, the number of reads per annotated genes, run a differential expression analysis, um, visualize it, and run a functional arrangement analysis. We now need to have the data into Galaxy. Um, for the first part of these tutorials, we will use uh, the files for two out of the seven samples to demonstrate the first steps of the, of the pipeline. Um, the data, so for to getting the data into Galaxy, we need first to create a new history. So we are now in the tutorials, we want to go back to Galaxy interface, so we click outside of the tutorials here, anywhere. We need to create a new history, so you go on the history panel on the right, you click on create a new history. We rename the history, rename it rna -seq tutorial, and then we need to get data into, we need to get to add our data there in this history. If you go back to the tutorials, you will see that uh, you can import a uh, FASTQ file uh, for the different, for these two samples from Zenodo, where they are stored, by copy uh, the different links that are, that are there and import them. Um, if you don't know how to do that, you can expand this uh, little box and you will, uh, you, it will be explained. But if you are using the European Galaxy server, we already put the data on the shared data libraries for you. So uh, we will do that. We will import the data using the data libraries. So to do that, go back to Galaxy. You will go on the top to shared data. You click on data libraries. You will be redirected to a new page where you have different folders. You may have different folders than my, mine, but you should have all the same that is called GTN materials. You click on GTN materials, it's uh, the, the materials from all the training materials tutorials. Um, you go then to in transcriptomics, uh, you go to the reference based RNA seq data analysis, you click on DOI, uh, the title, the, and then you we got different, uh, we got different files. You have just some GTF file that we will use later. And then you have for, for different um, for the different samples um, that are named GSM uh, forty six eleven something. You have different files, so you have a FASQ Sanger, you have a counts, etc. For each of the sample, um, we need to go back to the tutorial to check which samples we want to use. Uh, so. Please, you can select there. Uh, you see that you are redirected to the home page because we changed the page so it's not loaded anymore. So we go to transcriptomics. Again, the reference based uh, RNA seq data analysis tutorials. Um, you can go directly to the correct sections if you go on the left in the, in the table of content. And you see that for this, uh, for these tutorials, we need to load the 77 sample that is a control, an uh, untreated sample, and the 80 that is a treated sample. So we will select the file, the FASTQ file for these samples. And as it's mentioned here, it should be 77 underscore 1, 77 underscore 2, 80 underscore 1, 80 underscore 2. So we need to select four files there. So we select 77 underscore 1, 77 underscore 2, 
Um, and then we need to go on the second page and to find the AT underscore one, AT underscore two. So you should have selected four uh, data sets and that we want to export to our history as a data set. Then you select in which story you want to import them and you click on import. It will import the select items into your history. When it's um, green here, you can go back to the main, uh, the main page of Galaxy by clicking on Analyze Data. And then on the right, in your history, you should have now four datasets. But you see that the names of these datasets are the URL names, so we need to rename them. So to, we need to edit attributes and then we remove the first part of the URL to keep only 77 underscore 1. We save that and we do that for the other data sets here. Underscore 7. Save that. We now go to 80. We do the same. We do that again for the last data set. Perfect. And we now have four files with a better naming. But we want to be sure that these both data sets that are from, from the same sample, so 77 underscore 1 and 77 underscore 2, are somehow linked together. We want to add something that is called a tag. So to do that, we expand the data sets by clicking on it, and we click Edit Dataset Tag. And we add a tag, which is the name of the sample, so GSM461177. And we want to be sure that this tag propagates, that it's visible uh, for each uh, other outputs for um, for this, the tool that I run for that. So we add a hashtag first. We copy this, uh, this um, tag that has been added because we want to add the same tag to the other samples. So you do that and once you are ready you can click on the return uh, a key on your keyboard. You do the same for the same end, and then you pass the, the tag that you already added. Then it's automatically added there. You see that now we have be below the names of the of the files, you have a small tag there. And you will see later how it can be really useful. Then we add the same for the other one, GSM461180. You copy it also because you will add it again to the other file that I set here. And here we are. So we now have four files with the correct naming in our history and with the tags. Check again on the tutorial. Did we forget any steps? So we need to reload. I'm sorry, the tutorial. So we go to transcriptomic, reference based, RNS data analysis data upload. We are in the steps. So we created a new history that we named correctly. We imported the FASTQ file. We renamed each data set according to the sample. Ah, we forgot this step. Check the data type if the data type is FASTQ singer and not FASTQ. So to do that, we expand the file. We see that FASTQ singer is there. FASTQ singer, FASTQ singer, FASTQ singer. So all good for with our data sets. Let's go back to the tutorial. Um, and then we added a tag for all the, 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 the sample name. And then we have a question. How are the data, the data sequence stored and what are the different entries in the file? So if we open one of the file, we see that we have a FASTQ, FASTQ file, which means that each sequence is stored as a four lines. Uh, the first line is always starting is always starting with the hat, then the sequence ID and, and some some information from the sequencing uh, from the sequencing facility. Then the first the second line is the sequence itself. Uh, the third line starts with the plus, and the fourth line is a sequence uh, of quality for each nucleotide. So this is the quality score, the I for the T. Um, but if you already, you should have already followed the quality control tutorials where 
everything is already detailed there. So I will not go through the details there now about that. So uh, let's go back to the tutorial so we finish that. The files that we just uploaded to Galaxy contain the reads that are raw data from the sequencing machine. So no pretreatment has been done uh, on the data. So the first step that we need to do for any RNA-seq analysis is to assess the quality. Because during sequencing, some errors can be introduced, such as incorrect nucleotide being called. And they are due to technical limitation of the sequencing platforms. Um, but you probably already know more from the quality control tutorials. And so now we will follow the same step that you did during the quality control tutorials. We will run FastQC to create a report of the quality, sequence quality. We will run MultiQC to aggregate the generated report and could adapt to improve the quality of sequence via trimming and filtering. So let's go back to Galaxy. So first we need to run FastQC. So we go back to Galaxy. We search on the toolbar on the left. We search for FastQC. And then we select FastQC read quality report. Um, then we need to we want to run that on all our four files. So we click on multiple data sets, and with the shift uh, key on your keyboard, you select the four files there, and then you can execute. And you will see that in your history, um, for each of the samples, two uh, new data sets are generated. So FastQC on the ETA1 uh, web page and FastQC on the ETA1, for example, raw data there. And what we want to do afterwards is to aggregate the FastQC, FastQC report uh, using MultiQC. So we can start, we can already launch MultiQC, even if FastQC is not run, is already running, is still running. Um, so we search for MultiQC in the toolbar. We select uh, on which file, in which uh, tools has been used to generate the report. So we search for FastQC, FastQC. Um, then we need to say which type of FastQC output we will use the raw data, and then using again the shift, uh, again now the command or the uh, keyboard, you can select the different the raw data that you need to have. So the four you should have select four files, so file raw data, and then you can execute. So MultiQC will wait until FastQC, all FastQC are done to run. Um, so we have a few minutes now to, to wait um, and you see already that the, the tag that we added there are automatically added to the, to the FastQC. So it's a way for us to keep track of which, so that this FastQC has been run on, on data one, which is this one, which means this sample here. So it's a better way for us to, to keep track of that. So if we open, for example, the FastQC report web page for the data one, you see that you have some basic information, basic statistics, and uh, some reports that has been generated. But you already go through each of these reports by following the quality control tutorials. Um, so I just check on the tutorial. So we are in the end zone uh, quality control. So we see that FastQC, we run FastQC. And it's, we have a question there. What is the red length? So how do we know the red length? So we open the web page uh, report from FastQC. And we see that the length, uh, sequence length is 37. So it's quite small sequences there. But it's also, remember, it's all data from 2000, that has been published in 2011. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, we go back to the tutorial here. Um, we see that we are already running MultiQC. And then once MultiQC is done, we need to inspect the web page output for MultiQC. And we have two questions to check then. What do you think about the quality of the sequence? What should we do? Um, so MultiQC is, we are waiting for MultiQC to run. And if you see already that because we run MultiQC on the output of these files that have these different tags, we see that the, the both tags has been added there for this file. 
So MultiQC is running. We are waiting until MultiQC is done. And should should be fast now. And once it's done, we will open it. So it's green. Everything is fine. We can open it. And you see that the different uh, report for the different for the different uh, samples has been uh, aggregated together, and we can go through the different uh, output from FastQC, and we see the different uh, the different sample in one in one in one report. So one graphs for for the sequence quality histogram, and with a different sample there. So the question was, oops, sorry again. Um, most. So what do you think about the quality of the sequence? Um, so the quality is quite good, so it's mostly for most of the sample it's green, so the quality is okay. It's decreasing at the end, which is expected for most of the Illumina sequencing. But we see that one of the sample, the AT underscore um, 2, is the, the decrease is much higher, so it's much more important, and it's uh, labeled as orange by FastQC. So maybe the quality is not so good there. Um, oh, sorry, I will be used to that again. So what should we do? Um, so here you have a more detailed answers if you want to check. Um, so the quality, the the histogram of the mean quality score per sequence is quite okay, except for AT underscore two. Um, we see that here we may need to trim the end of the sequence because the, it's dropping too much. Uh, the GC content is okay. Um, there is some some end contents so or some some nucleotide that are ends. We have a quite uh, duplication level, quite high, but it's expected for RNA-seq data. And I think that's most of the things. Um, yep. But if you want more details about the, what we can say about that, you, I recommend you to check the, the, the detailed answer that you have there. But we have, uh, so, as we said, we should trim the read to get rid of the bases that were sequenced with ice identity, so it means mo mostly the end of the reads. And also remove the reads with the overall bad quality. We have another question in the tutorials. What is the relationship between uh, underscore 1 and underscore 2 for each of the samples? Um, we are talking here about uh, parent sequencing. So the underscore one is the river, the forward reads, and the a underscore two are the reverse reads. And you have a detailed explanation there about what does that mean. So now we need to, we want to remove the the bad quality uh, nucleotide, but also the reads. So for that we will need to run cutadapt. So we need go to the tools, we search for cut adapt here. Remove, reuse that. Um, we have, as we mentioned, because we checked that we have underscore two, underscore one, we have parent data, so we said parent. And then we need to select uh, as the, the dash one, so that it's the forward read with the underscore one. Um, the underscore two, uh, then as the reverse, um, what are the different, so we need to check, I don't remember all the details. So we want to have a filtering option, so remove all the read that are, that have, um, that are shorter than 20. We want to, to get rid of the reads where the quality, the, the mean quality is below 20. Um, but also uh, in the um, if the quality drop too much. So we go back, sorry, again. So in filtering options, so we need to go down, filter options here. We want to have a minimum length of 20. In read modification option, we want a quality cutoff of 20. That we mean that uh, that the the quality base 
it will trim the quality base uh, for that um, there uh, on, based on the quality score of 20 and in the output uh, output options we want a report to be yes so output options we want to create a report that can be used afterwards for multi QC Globally, I recommend you to go through all the parameters to check that, but here I go quickly, uh, you can see more details uh, doing the, the, with the quality control tutorials, but also by reading the, through the documentation. So we generate a report that we can again uh, aggregate using multi-QC. So I recommend while CatAdapt is running to also already start multi-QC. So then um, for multi-QC, which tool has been used, you select, you search for CutAdapt uh, and then you need to select the boss, uh, the report and you have two reports that has been generated because, um, so now we don't have four, uh, four CutAdapt that have been run but only two because we all used already the, the two, two samples together so we have two reports that we need to aggregate using MultiQC. You can take a short break now because CutAdapts can take some time to run. Uh, and then we come back in a few minutes when CutAdapt is done. It is now finished and as well as MultiQC. So we can inspect the MultiQC output to check the result of the, of the, of the trimming and the cutting of the removing of the data set. So if we see that, if we open the multi-QC, we see that for the 77 samples, 2.5% uh, of the base pair has been trimmed. So especially at the end of the of, um, at the end of the reads, and for the 80 samples, it seems that 12% have been removed. It's something we expected given the result, and when we saw that for a for at least for the for the 80 uh, samples, the quality was not so good at the end. Um, and we can see also, if we look at the percentage of filter read, uh, we see that uh, quite a lot of, of reads has been removed also. Um, so for the 77 of, uh, sample, 1.3 uh, 1.4% of the read were too short after the cutting, so they were removed. Um, and for the 80 sample, 9% has been removed. So it's mean that uh, so a lot of, of the base pairs has, re, has been cut out of the end of the read, and then the read will become too small to be kept, too short to be kept. So it's what it said there. So if we go back to the tutorials, um, there were uh, these questions uh, were exactly were asked then in the tutorials. So now we can move to the mapping part. Now that the quality control is done, we need to do a mapping. So the mapping, the idea of the mapping is to make sense of the read, to try to identify where these uh, reads come from, from which gene they come from. Um, once we are, so we need, for that we need to locate where, the, where they come from on the genomes to then associate, okay, this part of the genome where they belongs to is part of, is, uh, this part of the genomes where they belongs, um, correspond to these genes. So when we, because uh, we are talking about Drosophila, and for Drosophila there is a reference genome available, so we can use that to help us uh, finding the locations. This process is called is called aligning or mapping the reads to the reference genome. Um, you should have already learned a bit about mapping by following the the tutorials on mapping. If not, please feel free to feel please follow it. So in this study, uh, so we used uh, Drosophila melanogaster cells to, to extract the, the RNA. So we need to use the same. Uh, we need to use to find the reference genome of Drosophila, to map then the sequence to that. Um, there is a question uh, on the tutorials about what is a reference genome, um, what are the different versions of a reference genome, why do we have that, um, and which reference genome we should use. 
um, please check the solutions on your own. But the answer is we need to use the reference genome uh, once we start using a reference genome. We, and we, with one version of the reference genome, we should keep using this one along. So, uh, when we talk about a chaotic transcriptor, uh, most read origin, uh, origin from, from mRNA, so from uh, uh, messenger RNA, so from genes like the introns. So the reads come from exon 1, exon 2, or exon 3, and they can, they can somehow, what we call, uh, span over these different exons. For example, the blue year, these blue reads um, span over exon 1 and exon 2 and miss the uh, intro in between exon 1 and exon 2. So then, uh, because of that, because of the specificity of eukaryotic uh, transcriptome, um, we cannot just map the read to the genome as we usually do for our DNA data. We need some specific mappers that, um, that are developed to, to efficiently map uh, the reads to to different exon. So most of the idea of most of the the idea of most of these um, mappers of these tools um, is they try to map the reads over the different exons. So like this, so they map this read to this exon one and this one. So we call them the mapped reads. And once um, out of the read that didn't map, they try to split them over different exon. So it's the idea of uh, splicing aware mappers, and it's what um, and it's used for transcriptomic and eukaryotic transcriptomic data. Um, we gave here in this box uh, more details about the different uh, spliced aware um, mappers. Um, and especially the history behind them. I uh, recommend you to read that. I will not go through the detail now, but just to remember there are different generations of mappers and with different uh, um, implementation there. So now we will read, we will map our reads to the Drosophila melanogaster uh, genome, reference genome, using a tool that is called STAR. For that, we need to have first uh, um, annotations of where the different exons are in the genomes. We need to import that into our history. Um, as for the data, there is uh, this file, it's, which is called a GTF file, is available in the data library, so we'll import it. So please go back to Galaxy, go to shared data, data libraries. You go then to the GTN material, once you are there, you search for transcriptomic. You go to the reference-based RNA-seq data analysis, uh, then the DOI, and then you use the, this one. So the third file here, oops, sorry. We want to import it to history. Yeah, we want to import in our history. So it's here to be sure that we use the same file, um, but just for to be sure, so if you go to Galaxy and in the data libraries, so if you go back to share data data libraries, you can see that you, there is other uh, genomes and annotation available there, um, where you can find the annotation, the reference genome, etc. Here we will use this one because uh, to be sure that we all use the same, um, between different uh, Galaxy uh, server, but here I just showed you where you can find other reference genomes on your European Galaxy server. So let's go back to Galaxy. Um, and then, so we have now our GTF file uh, there. We will rename it as we did for the FASTQ file at the beginning. So we remove the first part, we remove .gtf at the end, and we save it. Uh, and I think, oh, we need to load again the tutorials as every time we change a page on the interface. So we go back there, we were in the mapping part and we are here now. So we need to rename the history. We need to check that the GTF, the data type is GTF and not GFF and that the database is DM6 which is the version of Drosophila melanogaster. So the GTF, oh, which one we need to already? We need to be sure that 
it's GTF, the data type, and the database is DM6. So we have the GTF here, we need to change now the database. So we go to edit attribute, and then here in database build, you can search for DM6 here, and you save it. So now um, it's to be sure that, uh, that this file is associated to that. Okay, so now we want to run um, a RNS Terra, which is a mapper, with the following parameters to map the read to the different genome. So we want to use parent data set, so we search for star in the tools, um, and you use the RNS star, gap read mappers for RNA data. We say that we have parent uh, data as individual data sets. Um, we now need to use, so now we need to put the forward reads and the reverse read here. We have two samples, so we need to collect, to, to run, and we want to run the same parameters, so we need to select multiple data sets. We need to select now the output of cutadapt, cut that were the trimmed read. So for the forward, it's always the read one, output and for the reverse the read two. Be careful when you select them so it's important that you select the correct one. Custom or built-in reference genome so we need to use a, a built-in reference between um, we want to use uh, what is again so we want to use genome reference with without built-in genome so without we select the reference genome which is dm6 um, then we can give a gene model for the splice junction, so it means where are the different exons. So for that we can use the GTF file that we just uploaded. Then there is the length of the genomic sequencing around the annotated junctions. And it says the interval value is read length minus 1. Uh, do you remember what were the lengths? Uh, we thought that in the output of FASQC, so it was 37. So here we need to put 36. Um, then, what are the different parameters? And so 36, and that's all. So you can check the other outputs, but yeah, take time when you have the time to do that. I will not do it now. So then you can execute uh, star. It can take, it will take some time. So please uh, feel free to take a break now for a few minutes, just the time it's running. RNA star is now done, so you have now in your history, you have uh, three files for the 80 sample and three files for 77. Um, as we did for FASQC or for CatAdapt, we can aggregate the result from star and the report that are uh, there in logs using multi-QC, so search for multi-QC. In the tools, you search for star the tool that has been used for generate, uh, we use the log and you select the to log file there and you can execute that. Um, it will give you give us some some informations like which um, how many how many reads uh, has been mapped to the reference genomes, uh, how many read has been multiple mapped, so it's meaning to several locations uh, in, in, the, in the reference genome, etc. And so, once while MultiQC is running, we can check, so we have a question afterwards, so what percentage of read has been mapped exactly, have been like exactly once for both samples, and what are the other available statistics, and so you have some details here, so we will check the results once MultiQC is done, and it seems to be done now. So I will open the web page. So it says that 83% um, uh, of the read for the first data set has been mapped or aligned to the reference genome, 79 Nine for the second uh, refer for the second data sets. If you will look at the percentage, so 80.3 80, 80 has been uniquely mapped 
So it means that they are mapped to only one locations. And then we have 5.5% of the read that has been mapped to multiple locations. It means probably that the read are too short and because of some repetitions we can see that. And some has been mapped to too many locations in the same time and some were too short to be correctly mapped. And we have also the information for the, for the second data set here. Oops, sorry, here. Yeah. So we go back here. Um, so it's meant that according to the report, uh, more than 80% of the read uh, for both samples has been mapped at least once for to the reference genomes. So we can then proceed with the analysis. And if the percentage were below 70%, we should probably investigate for possible contaminations. It can be due during the sequencing, during the RNA extraction or something. Um, one thing you can do then is trying to, if you have such a case, uh, you can try to map to the human reference genome or to other reference genome or maybe bacteria to see if you have uh, some possible contamination that you can remove them. Um, but the main output of and the more interesting output for for RNA star is the BAM file. Um, but if you follow already the RNA the mapping tutorials, you already know what is a BAM file and that which information you have in a BAM file. So I will not go too much in details. I will just try to find some example here. So here, so if you scroll down after the the, the first line of um, comments, you have the name of the sequence and some extra information like the, the size and on which chromosome it has been mapped, on which locations, with the quality, etc, etc. But you find the detail, um, you can find the detail here on, on the mapping here, on how, how it looks like. Um, so the question is which information do you find in a BAM file, in a SAM file, and what are the different information compared to the FASTQ file? So the more information that you, the, the BAM file and SAM file compared to a FASTQ file is that you have the location of the read or where the read has been mapped on the reference genome. The BAM file contain as BAM file contains information for all our reads, it makes it difficult to inspect and explore, especially with this format, the text format. So there is powerful tool now to visualize the content of a BAM file, uh, for example, using IGV. So I recommend you to install IGV um, and start it. So I already started locally for me. So feel free, please start it. Uh, check, follow the instruction to install it. And then we can visualize the BAM file uh, for the 77 sample together. So uh, we go back to Galaxy. You, we already started uh, the, BAM, the IGV. So you expand, you go to the BAM file here. And what you can do, you can say display with IGV local. And then it will uh, launch IGV for you. And then you can see here the different uh, information here. We will zoom in a bit, so to zoom you select Arabia there and you can see there, you need to see to zoom again a bit more, again. Oh, we don't see anything. You have here, okay now it's a zoom out a bit, so here. No, it's loading slowly. So IGV is a quite uh, slow tool, um, but yeah, it's a good one. So here you have an, a good example. So here you have uh, the different reads here and where they are mapped on the reference genome that is on the top, you see their locations. Um, and you have what we call the courage here, which is only that represents the density of read mapping to, to the different locations here. If we go back to the tutorials uh, on Galaxy, sorry, I need to close that. Um, if we go back to the to the to the tutorials, we would like to zoom to the specific location, so on the chromosome chromosome four. So please copy this log the the um, the this text here, the so chromosome four, etc., and go back to the, your IGV. And what you do, you can pass this location here on the top here 
and it will go directly to the specific region that is there. So you can see exactly the region that we want to, sh to display um, within IGV with, uh, that is from the tutorial. So if we go back to the tutorial, we should have something like this. Um, what, is, uh, what is the information appear on the top of the gray peaks? So that this one is the coverage, as we already mentioned. What do the connecting lines between the sum of the Allen read indicate? So if we go back to IGV here, you have some example here of his lines, the horizontal lines between, re between some, between there. Um, these are the spanning, um, the entrance in between. So you have a read that mapped here, one part of the read here and one part here. So it's mean that this read is spanning over this intron that is there. It's what is represented by that. Uh, what another way to inspect the splicing junction is what is using what is called a sashimi plot. So to do that, to create a sashimi plot, what you can do is right click on IGV and click on sashimi plot here. So it will create this, uh, this sashimi plot here, where you have the coverage here, and then in this location here, you have this arc here with uh, some number on the top here. It's uh, the number of reads that's spanning over this intro. So here we have seven reads that mapped or, and span over this specific intro. 30 here, 20 here, 22, etc. It's what is represented here. Um, and the next question is: What, what do we? Ob why do we observe different stacked group of line blue lines here on the bottoms? Um, these are the, diff the represent the different transcripts of the gene um, that are represented in the in the in the. Um, in the GTF file, so in the annotated file, we see that, so we know that there is an exon here and some, uh, some intron here and exon here, but we know that um, they can be used by different genes. So this one is one gene, this one in another gene, etc. So we have different uh, gene name here that use the same exon for in the annotation. Okay. Um, and uh, once you did that, once you are done with the inspection of the mapping result, you can do some extra checking about for the mapping. We gave a lot of details in this uh, expandable box here uh, to check, for example, uh, the percentage of duplicate reads using a tool that is called Mark Duplicates, the number of reads mapped to each chromosome, the body coverage, um, the read uh, distribution across features, so across genes, across intron, exon, etc. Um, we will not go through that. I recommend you to do it on your own and to apply that also to your own data set then later. So we now have the, used the mapping. We have now the information of where the reads are located in the reference genome and how well they were mapped. And so the next step in our RNA-seq data analysis is quantify to quantify uh, the number of reads mapped to a specific genomic feature, so the genes. Like now to identify the genes that are differentially expressed because of the bacilli genes um, depletions. So for that we need to uh, we now so we have where the the reads are mapped, but on the locations they are mapped on the genomes, but not to which genes they correspond to. So to then compare the expression of sequences between different conditions, so between uh, with depletion or without depletions, we need to, to identify the number of reads that are, um, we need to quantify the number of reads per genes. Or specifically, we need to, to quantify the number of reads mapping to the exon of each genes. As we already mentioned before, so the reads are mapping only to exon, not the intron. So when we need to count, uh, to count the number of reads per genes, we need to count the number of reads that are mapping over the exons. So um, if we take this example of these figures, um, the question, so we have two questions here. So how many reads are found for the different exons? So for example, for the exon 1, we have three, three reads mapping there. Exon 2, 2. Exon 1 in the second genes, 1, 2, 3. Exon 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. And exon 3, 1, 2, 3. 
But then if we count the, at the level of the genes, uh, we have different numbers. So we, it's not just an addition of, of the number of, of read mapping for the different exons. We need to take into account this case of the three that map, uh, that span over two exons. So here for this, uh, this, this gene, so gene one, we have one, two, three, four reads that, that um, map to the genes and not uh, five if we would have just add, uh, make an addition between the two. And here for the gene two, it's the same because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and not one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we need to be careful when we do the counting of just not uh, to count the different reads inside the genes by uh, taking into account the exon and the, the, the reads that span over the different exons. So different tools are available for that, HD second or features count. Um, we will use today features count because it's, uh, it's currently faster and requires far less uh, computational resources um, to do that. So uh, in principle, this accounting was um, it's a fairly simple task, as I mentioned, but there is some detail that needs to be given to features count. Uh, for example, the strandness. So, um, and because uh, the RNA seq uh, RNA are typically targeting a single single uh, strand and have polarity, um, the strain is usually lost after both strains of cDNA are sensitized and selected. Um, however, keeping this information can be useful, uh, especially for read located on the overlap between two genes. So for example, if you have the read one here, you are, and it's mapped here, you are quite sure that it's mapping and it's belonging to, read one, to gene 1. But if you, we talk about the read 2 here, that mapped here at the overlap between read gene 1 and gene 2, gene 1 being on one, on one strand of the DNA and gene 2 on the other, other strand, um, you, we don't know to which one, uh, to which genes read 2 belongs to. And some library preparation protocol uh, uh, create some what is called a stranded RNA seq library, and um, by extracting only the RNA map uh, belonging to one uh, to the genes from one strand. So we need to do have this information. So if our library preparation is unstranded or stranded, and on which strand it belongs to. Um, if you want to know more about strandness, you can read more. Uh, we, we added much more information here about the strandness information. Uh, usually this information is provided with your FASQ file, with when you got your FASQ file from your sequencing facility. If not, you need to try to find on the site um, where you donated the data or in the corresponding publication this information. It usually come with the library preparation. But if, if you have no way that you find this information, what you can do, you can use a tool that is called Infer Experiment from RSEC UC, tool suite. Uh, this tool takes a BAM file from the mapping and selects a subsample of the reads and compare the, their, uh, where these reads are mapping to the coordinates uh, and strengths of, of um, using the annotations. So based on the strand of the genes where we can find the read, we can um, estimate uh, whether the sequencing uh, protocol is strand specific or not. So for example, if we know that all the, the genes are mapping to only genes, uh, all the reads are mapping only to genes belonging to the forward read, we know that it's a stranded library forward, same for reverse. And if we are read uh, that mapped on both, on Statistically, on every genes on the genomes, then we can estimate that the library is unstranded. So here we will assume that we don't know the library's uh, strandness. So we need to to estimate that. So we need first to convert the GTF uh, the annotation file to a bed twelve because it's needed to the tool infer experiment. So the first step that we need to do so. Uh, we need to do a convert GTF to BED. 
So it will take this uh, our Drosophila melanogaster uh, annotation file and, um, and transfer transform it into a bed file, a bed 12 file. Um, yep. Here, execute. So the bed 12 is a, just another. It's also a tabular file. It's a different way of uh, different column order than the GTF. And then once you have that, we will use a tool that is called infer experiment. Infer experiment. Um, that speculate how our RNA seq were configured. So we need to provide the BAM file. Uh, so we provide the both BAM file. We will provide the reference genome um, that is in bed 12 here. Uh, we need to select how many uh, reads uh, sample from the BAM file to use. Uh, so here there is 200,000. Uh, we will use the same number. So 200,000, the mapping quality, minimum mapping quality of 30. So just for information, the mapping quality uh, is encoded the same way as the nucleotide quality for sequencing is. So between 0 and 40 around. So here we keep a quite high, level, high threshold. Um, then it will generate two files, so two, two outputs for the infer experiments that are from the both uh, sample here. Um, and uh, the, this tool generates one file with, which, is a, which is a text file with uh, information if the, lab, the library is parent or single end and the fraction of read that were failed to, for which we don't know if they become to, to one strand on the others um, or map to a specific genes on trend. And then for the different type of library, they will say how many reads are mapping um, uh, the fraction of read that can be explained because mapping to the to forward strand uh, genes, the fraction for the reverse strand reads. So, if we open uh, the this one uh, that is from for the AT sample, here we can see. So this is parent data. The fraction of read that we have failed to determine is uh, nine percent. The fraction of read explained by one plus plus one minus blah 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 etc. is zero point thirty five. So it means that uh, forty five percent of the read are somehow mapped to the to the forward and forty five to the reverse read to the reverse trend. So then here because the fraction is I mean, we don't. Uh, it seems that there is no clear uh, distinctions between the the, the 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 two types. So we can uh, we cannot say we have to say that this uh, the library seems to be unstranded. Um, if you want more details about the strandness and the because it can be sometimes difficult to find out which settings correspond to to the to the others given when we talk about the strainness, um, we created a small table that can be useful to identify the library type that you need to fill or the information that you need to fill for the different tools. So depending on the library preparation and the tool here, um, what are the different, so if it's parent and um, and uh, and um, forward or reverse, etc, etc. So now we know that um, our reads are for uh, and no, our library preparation is unstranded. We can run uh, feature scans to count the number of reads per annotated genes. So we search for feature counts here in our tools. So feature feature counts. We define we need to give our two BAM file. Um, we say that its uh, library is unstranded. We will use um, a locally cached uh, annotation file. We will. Oop. Ah, in your history, sorry. The annotation is in our history. We'll use the GTF file. We want the output to be a gene ID 
slash readcons that can be used for multi-QC and DSEC2. We want to create a, what is called a gene length uh, file and we will need that later on. Um, what do we want to have to? So um, in the option for parent uh, read, so option for parent, we have several information. Do we want to count fragment instead of read? Uh, we want to count the, the, we want, what do we want already? I'm sorry, I'm lost. Uh, we want to count the fragment, um, so we want to count the fragment instead of the reads. Um, and in advanced options, so we want to be sure that we, we filter, that we count the number of read mapping on the exons and aggregate that at the level of the, level of the gene, that's what we say there. Um, we don't want the reads to map to multiple locations and the minimum mapping quality per read is zero there and I think that's, oh no, we say 10 here, sorry, um, to be sure that we are consistent. Here, so we want at least, uh, we want to, to consider only the reads that have at least a mapping quality of 10. And then we can, you can check the other parameters, uh, you can, uh, I recommend you to check the other parameters, but then you can run the fast QC, the, sorry, features count. Um, we will, as we did already for the other uh, tools, uh, so we will aggregate the report from features counts using multi-QC. Uh, once, when it's okay. For the tools to be such. Okay, there is some delay in the interface. It happens, no worries. Um, it's everything is fine. Okay. I will just reload the interface. It can happen sometimes that we lose. Um, the interface can be a bit slower, slower to load. I will search for the tool again, multi QC. Then I will start it while oh, features count is already done, so I can select features count. I use I select the, diff, the both summaries that has been generated in the the history, and I will run execute. Oh, I lost it. Yeah, true, because I reload the interface, so I go back to transcriptomics. Um, Reference-based RNS seq data analysis. And counting the number of reads per, counting reads per genes. And I'm currently there. Multi QC. I aggregate the result. Um, and then the different question that we have are how many reads has been assigned to a genes, and when we should worry about the assignment rate, and what should we do. So we we'll just wait until fast QC, multi QC is done. It will first. It will be fast. It should be fast. Um, but then, okay, it's done. So I can visualize. So um, sixty percent of the around sixty percent of the reads has been assigned to to uh, a feature. Specifically here, we selected only the exon, so has been assigned to exon. If we look there, we have a percentage, so 63% has been assigned to Exxon, 9% um, has been neither unsigned or unmapped, um, some were um, unassigned because the mapping quality was too low, uh, some were uh, not assigned because multi-mapped, uh, some were as uh, not assigned because they were there are no features uh, really interesting there, and some were ambiguous. The next question was, uh, when do, should we worry? Um, I will say that when the percentage is below of uh, assignment, is below, to, is below um, 50%, then you should investigate where your reads have been mapped. So are they mapped inside genes? And, 
uh, check if the annotations correspond to the correct reference genome version, so it's happening also, that you select one version of your reference genome for the mapping and then the annotations you have a different version. So then um, they are mapping, they are mapped correctly but not uh, to genes that are known or not in the correct location of the genes. But the main output of features count that we can see is this uh, what we call the counts file. If you open it, you will see that uh, it's a big table where you have uh, the first column is the gene ID. So here you have the ID of the genes. And the second column is how many reads have been mapped to this specific gene here. So here you have one, 197 reads that has been mapped to this specific gene. Um, and one question that we have is which feature are the most count uh, on both samples. Um, for that you can use the sort tools to sort these tables by uh, a descending order to have on the top the output and you can identify that. I will let you do that on your own. Um, so now we have the count uh, read. Uh, we have counting the number of reads that map to the different genes for the two samples, so 80 and 77. Um, but it would be for you. I will recommend you to do the same procedure as we did. So the upload quality control mapping counting for the other data sets uh, to check um, how did you, uh, if you understood the, the correct, uh, how to do that, but also how to do when you have single end data. So you will find the same the data on the same locations in the data libraries. So we, we have the FASTQ file on the top um, and where you can also find them on the node.